Would you like to know if you are going to be stripped of your personal memories by Alzheimer's disease? This devastating condition affects up to 50 million of us globally. The biggest risk factor for Alzheimer's disease is age. And for the first time in history, there are more people over the age of 65 than there are under the age of five, making Alzheimer's disease one of the greatest challenges of our time. Now, Alice Alzheimer's, pictured here in the left, discovered the disease over 110 years ago. Nevertheless, the current recovery rate for Alzheimer's disease patients is 0%. Why is that? The reason is that every single treatment trial aimed to slow or halt the growth of neurotoxic proteins that characterize the disease that you can see here in the middle have failed. The reason for that, scientists think, is that treatment is simply administered too late. Despite scientific advances in medical technology, such as postron emission tomography scans and cerebral spinal fluid evaluations that can detect early disease growth as it begins to accumulate here in the medial temporal lobes in green, these methods are simply not suitable to screen the mass population for Alzheimer's disease because they're expensive, time-consuming, and they often carry very nasty side effects. So what then are we going to do for the 50 million people that will develop Alzheimer's disease by 2050? Well, for my doctoral studies, I wanted to revolutionize the way we detect the very first stages of Alzheimer's disease. Now, I believe, as do many other scientists across the globe, that one of the very first symptoms of Alzheimer's disease is, in fact, spatial disorientation. The reason for that is that the areas, or the brain areas, that Alzheimer's disease affect first contain cells responsible for how we navigate space. So we can then try to measure the functioning of these cells using navigation tasks in order to find those early cognitive signs of those neurotoxic proteins that we saw earlier. Now, one challenge with using spatial navigation as for early detection is that scientists first need to understand inter-individual differences in spatial navigation ability. Do all individuals navigate the same way and with the same efficiency? Are men really better navigators than women? These remain unanswered questions. So given that we understand loss of navigation skill is very likely a first symptom of Alzheimer's disease, and the awareness that we need to understand population-level navigation behavior, we developed a gaming app called Sea Hero Quest to measure population-level navigation behavior. Now, it might surprise you to know that we currently spend more than 3 billion hours each week playing video games. So it only makes sense for scientists to use this time and record how people navigate while they're gaming. The Sea Hero Quest game records people's spatial navigation performance using an immersive virtual reality environment, like you can see in the video here, and it challenges different processes of the human navigation system. As you can see, the game is very visually appealing. So it's not like your standard thinking or cognitive test. In fact, when the game was made freely available to download via the Android and Apple Play Store in 2015, it was downloaded by more than 4.5 million people across 163 different countries 
providing me and many other scientists with a uniquely rich database for understanding variation in population level navigation behavior. So you'll never guess what we found. We found that indeed, age, sex, and nationality, which you can see were recorded in the game, have a strong influence on your navigation skill. So how well you navigate will at least partly depend on your age, your sex, and your nationality. This is really important, because it means when I'm trying to diagnose or determine what an Alzheimer's disease-related navigation deficit is, then I need to be accounting for these kind of personalized factors. So equipped with this knowledge, I use see here request in my experimental studies, because I believe that this game had prognostic value and could give us really important clues about who was a high-risk candidate for Alzheimer's disease based on how they navigate in the See Hero Quest game. Now, we know that genes are a very important risk factor for dementia. So I recruited participants who carry a specific variation of the apolipoprotein gene, which means that they are at least three to four times more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease than the general population. What I found is that those of us at genetic risk for Alzheimer's disease actually travel a further distance in the See Hero Quest game. But why is that? I asked myself. So in the next step, I generated the exact spatial trajectories that were taken by the high-risk and the low-risk genetic, risk, genetic groups. And I found that the reason the high genetic risk group was traveling a further distance in the Sea Hero Quest game is because people at high genetic risk tend to travel more along the border of the Sea Hero Quest environment, while people at low genetic risk tend to travel more along the center of the Sea Hero Quest environment, as you can see in the two examples I have above. This is really important because the high genetic risk group have no memory problems. So clinically, they are deemed healthy, despite already showing some abnormal navigation patterns in the Sea Hero Quest game. So I then used the big data we collected through the Play Store to create a highly personalized benchmark, which could then determine if someone's spatial navigation performance was deviating from that of their age, gender, and nationality matched peers. Again, as you can see in the illustration above. Despite this recent discovery, current diagnosis for Alzheimer's disease is still strongly based on memory, which we know now is not affected until the disease is really quite advanced. And I want to change this. We have seen that by using population-level navigation data, like generated here, we can identify high-risk candidates after just 10 minutes of gameplay at a very low cost in comparison to expensive brain scans. And although there's more work that needs to be done, I strongly believe that by creating these kind of personalized cognitive evaluations and tailoring diagnostic tools to patients' personal characteristics, we can identify those high-risk individuals early so that they can be enrolled in treatment trials and treatment can actually have a beneficial effect. But the future of Alzheimer's disease it's not only in the hands of doctors and scientists, but it's also determined by you. So now I'm going to tell you two ways that you can contribute to the fight against dementia. Firstly, you can contribute to generating this kind of population level navigation data that we have seen is so useful in medical research 
by playing the virtual reality version of the Sea Hero Quest game that is currently available on the Oculus Store. So as you can see a video of it playing here, it actually offers us a number of advantages as it provides an even more immersive experience in a setting that will bring us even closer to real-world navigation. So, for example, in order to actually look around, you have to move your head, and we can track head movements. Now, we know that head movements are a very important part of the human navigation system, so we expect a whole new set of very exciting data coming from the virtual reality version of Sea Hero Quest. Secondly, each and every one of you can actively play a role in reducing your own risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Epidemiological studies teach us that by getting adequate rest, by getting adequate nutrition, by training your brain with cognitively stimulating tasks and building up your brain's cognitive reserve, and in general, by leading a healthy lifestyle, you can statistically reduce your risk of dementia by at least 35%. Thank you.